In this video, we're going to be covering a new marketplace for music on Web3 called Nina Protocol. It offers a lot of unique, interesting things, so let's delve right in. Hey everyone, this is Barry from NFT Music Info. How are you doing today? Hope you're well. It's been a while since I last did a new website in terms of Web3 stuff, so it's good to delve right back in. And today we'll be looking at ninaprotocol.com. Hope people don't say Nina. My great nan was called Nina. So anyway, I'll call it Nina. Nina is a great way to publish, listen to and purchase music. We build tools for artists and fans to create their context. This, offering, this offers something very different. So you've got highlights like the normal section of NFTs here. And this explains how it works. So it can be publicly streamed by anyone. These releases of music releases are in the form of digital editions, as we know, which are scarce as the artist wishes. You can use Nina to simply host your music, to sell digital editions, or to build out a patronage mechanism by providing unique content and experiences to paying supporters. So they've got frequently asked questions. These are the new releases on here at the moment. This is what's great about this platform. Artists receive 100% of their sales. I don't know a marketplace out there that allows for that. I think if you pay a huge subscription, you might get that on some services, maybe SoundCloud. But other than that, you have normally have to pay a lot of money up front. Nina Protocol, however, you don't. The only fee is a one-time payment, which is typically around $4 per release, which covers the storage and transaction costs to the Solana and Arweave networks that Nina is built on. And Nina does not take a cut. How cool is that? You can see there's a music player at the bottom here as well, which I love to see on music platforms because you can delve into different areas and still play the same music. So that's really cool. So let's start exploring and let's see what kind of editions and music we've actually got on, on here at the moment. You can see it's quite a simplistic way of presenting it. It kind of reminds me of a few other platforms in a way, but I do like simplicity. I think that's really important. So if we select one, this is Frex. And apologies if you can hear the background noise of the cars whirring past. It's very, very hot today. So I've, I've got to leave it open, I'm afraid. So yeah, you've got a play button here. This bit's interesting because you can add it straight to the queue. So it's a bit like having a live playlist in that respect, which is cool. I presume that's just a refresh button. Oh no, that's where you connect your hot wallet, apologies, to see your hubs, okay? So this edition, as an example, only has five on there, okay? And it's not on the secondary market at the moment. The artist will receive in the smart contract resale value of 10% of what is resold on the secondary market. And you can view collectors have purchased. So this was released back in 2018, written by Kayla Jackson, produced by Godchild, distributed by Stake Worldwide. And this is where you typically purchase via USDC. Hmm, stablecoin, interesting. And you can see seven more related releases to this. So let's click on that. And then we're able to see, I presume that this is a label and these are the, whoops. I presume this is a label and this is what the other releases are for that. So um, yeah, so there you go. So there's another one from the same artist. Okay, so that's a good example. Let's have a look at the hamburger menu. I don't know if everybody calls it hamburger menu, but I certainly do. So you've got all the releases here. So let's see what filter options you've got. So you've got a list view, which you can change to. That really just changed the view of it because you've got no images now. You've just literally got text. And you've got the links here. You've got the artist names, which you can sort by. So now it's a grid system. It's a table, which I think is great. So this gives you a bit more of a broader idea, I guess, um, without delving right into loads of different screens, exactly what this platform's offering at the moment. So for example, Seed, is priced at one USDC dollar, and there's 94 editions remaining out of 100. That's what I like to see. I like to see artists not charging an absolute fortune. Sell as many as you can, I think that's a great strategy. Have a reasonable amount so that it doesn't sell instantly. Certainly Sound XYZ sell instantly, don't they? They never seem to have enough for the demand that's driving to that website. And then that way, that enables the secondary market to continue. So this is saying remaining 94 out of 100, so six have sold so far. 
and the resale is 20%, secondary market zero, and view collectors. So let's have a look at the collectors and see how that's viewed. Okay, yeah, that's what I just thought. It's just the uh, addresses of the people that have actually done. But what you can do is you can view their collection of, of anything else that they've purchased, which I think is cool. So chances are, if you like this particular track, you can view the other collectors, similar to Bandcamp in a way, and then you can actually see what else they've purchased. So let's just click on one, see what that looks like. Wow, this person's uh, collected six, is it? Yeah, six NFTs. Now, I can't purchase at the moment because I haven't connected to my wallet. So if I click Connect Wallet, you've got the option of Phantom, Soulflare, Glow, and Solid. So Phantom is one that I typically use, so let me connect to that one now. So this time, let's say I like this person's collection and I like this particular track. I can now purchase that with five USDC, which is quite cool. So if I just click on that, it'll just ask for the wallet approval and then I can actually make that transaction. Um, there'll be a bit, little bit of gas, but Solana is very low. It's a very good blockchain actually. I quite like Solana. Also in the releases section, you can also search by artist, which is quite useful. So you've got a full list of how many artists have actually minted on here, which is quite phenomenal really. A lot of people have done that. I guess because it's really inexpensive to actually host your music on this platform. I can see this platform going a lot of places. You know, it's built on a decent blockchain. Look how many artists are already onboarded. It's quite cool. You've also got your collection so that you can see what releases you purchased, your own releases. So if you're an artist yourself and you want to upload to the platform, you have to purchase what's known as NPCs, which are Nina publishing credits, which are required to access the publishing flow. So one NPC allows the publishing of one release, which is around $4. If you don't have a Solana wallet, you can set one up at phantom.app Fill out this form, we'll notify you when your credits have been distributed and there's also other ways to contact them if you've got any questions. There's also Nina Radio, let's have a quick look at that. So what this actually does is it'll actually play music via the music that's been minted on the platform which is so, so cool. And what it does, it randomises the selection of releases published through the protocol. So at the moment there's a potential of 392 releases songs to listen to. You can switch to recent releases instead if you prefer, which is good because then you can grab them if you like them, if you're if you're one of those power music NFT collectors, which I think is brilliant. So yeah, that, that is super cool. And then you can view release, you can share it as well if you like it. What I don't see on Nina yet are genres. So it may be a decision that they've decided that they don't want to go down that route. I understand if they don't. From my point of view, there's a big benefit as you know if you're a subscriber. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It doesn't cost anything. And yeah, I like synth pop music, so that's what I'm always looking for. Synth wave or house or techno. Yeah, because that's the music that I create myself as, a, as an artist. So I'm known as Cyber Monday for synth pop, synth wave. Cyber Friday for EDM stuff. Okay, so I think this is more like merch. So this is where you can actually purchase the official Nina Soft Launch product, which is a slip map for your turntable. Interesting, yeah, merch, that's how I see it. I was I was just wondering in the future they're gonna actually offer maybe proper vinyl in the future, but maybe that's something that they're not doing. Don't count me on that. Also, if you're interested in this project, you can go to their Twitter feed, their Discord, and you can contact them via email as well. So in terms of their frequently asked questions, they've got quite a few more information on here. So you're able to buy, sell, and stream music online, which is great. So it's designed to solve inequity and opportunism in the music industry. It's late, sorry, I'm slowing my words a little bit. In the music industry by providing a new model that doesn't symphony revenue from artists and helps everyone play a role in amplifying music. How does Nina work? Okay, after the one-time fee, which I've discussed, the release on Nina is permanent, okay? The fee handles Solana and Arweave's transaction and storage costs, and Nina takes no additional fees to publish the release. Isn't that incredible? The patronage model created between artists and fans serves as a platform agnostic mechanism to provide exclusive experiences to supporters. When uploading releases, the release will be publicly streamable and purchasable via USDC, and the artist receives 100% of um, the in initial sales. Sorry. When you create a hub, you can publish new releases to the platform, repost releases from the wider Nina ecosystem to your hub, publish writing either independently or in reference to a release, like music reviews, add collaborators with permissions for the above. Also, 
you are set two fees. There's a publishing fee, which is a percentage split of every release that's published via the Nina revenue share. Or there's the affiliate fee, which is a premium fee placed on top of releases reposted to the hub. They're doing that as invite only in coming weeks. So that's interesting. So this gives some examples of why you might want to use a hub. I certainly haven't heard of it before, so it's interesting that they've got this new terminology on here. So a typical artist can use a hub as their homepage and publish their music through it. So their hub becomes their discography and storefront, which is pretty cool. That's a huge gap in the market being filled there. A label, for example, can add their artists as collaborators. So when artists publish through the hub, the label's automatically added to the release's revenue share and receives a percentage of all future sales. In terms of a fan, a buyer, or an investor, they can keep track of all of their favorite music by building playlists, even with releases they don't own, earning a fee when sales occur through their hub. You might have a collective amount of artists, an artist collective, which can publish the music together and share in the sales. You might have a music blogger, which can review tracks and earn a fee whenever a reader purchases a track through their hub. A group of fans can create a collaborative playlist collaborative playlist of their favorite genre or artists earning fees when sales occur. A venue can purchase live sets that they hosted, creating both an archive of live events and a permanent revenue source for the artists and the venue operators. This is really interesting. They've got a how-to hub guide, but I'm not gonna go into that right now, but let me just zoom in. Okay, so hopefully you can see that a bit clearer now. So we've got in the very, very dark blue, a user, which is typically a fan. You've also got an artist as well, which is a bigger bubble of the dark blue. We've got a medium blue known as a hub, and we've got the app here as well. So as an artist, they can collaborate between one another. The creator hub can actually bring features to the artist, and the artist can be a member of a collective DAO hub. That can contribute to a social playlist app and actually have playlists featured on streaming apps a fan can be a member of a DAO hub. A fan can have an account on the social playlist app. They can purchase from the label hub and they can purchase from the artist hub. The artist hub can publish on the label hub and they can curate on the social playlist app. I'm trying my best guys on this thing, I'm sorry. A label hub can be featured on the streaming app as well as the creator hub being featured on the streaming, streaming app. <laughs> and the artist hub can have a track on the streaming app. So there you go. That's the whole world of problems, war and peace solved in one go. No, I'm actually very impressed with that. I think that's fantastic. They've really planned this out. And that's why I can see now why they're calling it a protocol. This is technology built on Web3, which is massive. And Foundation has recently done something similar. So check out that other video if you're interested in similar things to this. There's some other questions regarding why should I publish my music as an artist on Nina. So they say it's the most artist friendly way to sell your music. It doesn't take a cut from the music, gives you full access rights and collectors and enables full experimentation with how you find the right price for your work and your fans. You've got the hubs, but you can also be your very own platform. So artists will be able to better track who helps amplify their music and voice across the web because everything's recorded, isn't it? When we deploy these tools after hubs are open to the public, you will better understand who are your most die-hard fans. That's why Web3 can be so cool for musicians, is because it offers that. It's not very easy to see. I mean, you've got Bandcamp, but it's not the same, in my opinion. But it tells you who your die-hard fans are, which fans bloggers have helped bring awareness to your music and brought you new listeners and you can engage with them however you please. I think that's great. I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm really impressed with this platform. I just think it feels very fresh, very new, very clean and efficient. And I think it's really gonna build on the foundation that they've, they've got in the protocol. Certainly looking at the chart, it benefits everybody in the music ecosystem and I feel that that's really, really important. And it's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section and I hope you like this video. Make sure you give it a like and subscribe if you haven't, that would be fantastic. I'm close to 2000 subscribers and I'm so excited about getting there. So come on, make sure you give me a sub if you can. Or a subway, I don't mind. So you take care and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care, bye.